Okay, Waiting for Godot, Act 2. Starts off with a song about a dog who steals something, is beaten to death, and then the other dogs bury him, which could represent humanity and how we take what we want, and then we die, and no one cares until we're dead. It also serves as a warning to future generations not to do that, not to live that way. Uh, then Vladimir is there alone, and Estron comes, and they discuss happiness in relation to aloneness and how often we're happier alone, which could mean that we would be happier without a godlike figure um, or happier without the rest of society and its influence on us. Then Estragon talks about being beaten to death, or not being beaten to death, but being beaten again last night. And he says, I wasn't doing anything, they beat me, which means that the problem is nothing. The problem is the nothingness. He should be doing something. Uh, then there's he all he knows about the people who beat him is that there were 10 10 is a cool number um it represents the commandments which means that like the rules of society themselves are the things that are beating him then there's also there were also 10 plagues in egypt which means that like all the issues of the world is what's beating him down and then there are these things called i'm gonna butcher this word but the spherot and they are a step-by-step -step process illuminating the divine plan as it unfolds itself in creation. And basically, there, uh, there are ten things, and they mean crown, wisdom, understanding, kindness, severity, beauty, eternity, splendor, foundation, and kingship. And they're actually really cool, um, but the idea that these are the things which he lacks, and that's what's bringing him down, his lacking them, la his lacking them, <laughs> then... They talk about the tree, which was there yesterday, but now it has a couple leaves. And it, this the tree could be representative of the tree of life, which makes the leaves people. Um, the leaves say, to live is not enough, to die is not enough. Which means that, as they discuss throughout the play, like they're not doing anything, and it's not enough to just live, and they often want to die. But this is Sammy Beckett telling us that dying is not enough either. You have to be something, you have to do something. It's not good enough that just because you you don't want to live, you can't just die. That's not good enough. It's not uh, the right response. So then they talk about the boots some more. Uh, Estragon finds his boots from yesterday, but he insists that they're not his boots. His were grayish black, and these ones are brown. Um, which, if we remember, Godot is a slangy word for boot in French. Um and if we're once again assuming that Godot is God, then it's kind of slangy. It's, this creates an image of the personal God. Um, since Godot is a slang word, it's a personal relaxed view of him. And since Estragon also like discusses the boots that belong to him, mine, these are not mine, it once again creates an image of a God that is ours alone, um, each of us as individuals, not as a society. Um, it also, since he puts on the boots, even though he insists they're not his, creates this idea that often we accept God, but don't really accept him. Like, we go to church, we pray, but it doesn't mean anything because we don't make him personal. Um, then they try to do imitations of Pozo and Lucky, but Estragon can't remember Pozo or Lucky, so he just wants to be told what to do. And Estragon is constantly looking for a way out of life, either through legitimate death or being told what to do. He doesn't want to live. He doesn't want to have to make a decision, which is clearly a negative thing in this play. Um, he also wants to be pitied. He begs God to pity him, and Vladimir's like, what about me? And Estragon's like, no, just me. Which, once again, creates this idea of uh, our own self and how we can't conceive of others fully, which is brought up again by their inability to imitate Pozo and Lucky. Then Pozo and Lucky do show up, and Pozo is now blind, which very simply could mean, you know, yesterday he was blind to the world, blind to others, blind to others' plates. He was very self-centered, and now he is blind. But it also creates a situation in which Lucky, who before was an unwilling servant, is now his leader. Um, it gives Lucky an opportunity to either leave or stay, and he's staying, and he's now guiding Pozo. Um, Pozo has this new obsession with time, and he time doesn't matter to him. There are two philosophies on time, uh, Newtonian and then its opposing one. Newtonian or realist time 
says that time is like if you imagine a film strip the black lines on the film and then there's like the scenes in between time is those black lines and then life goes through them um the opposing view of that which was strongly supported by immanuel kant says that uh, time is a human creation it does not really exist this seems to be what pozo believes because he can't see anymore time ceases to exist for him um then they leave and the boy comes and the boy <laughs> tells them that godot does nothing which is a very interesting idea because it means that what we're waiting for it's not going to just come to us um godot the thing that we're looking for it doesn't do anything we have to find it but clearly pozo and er Estragon and Vladimir don't understand that because they decide that if Godot doesn't come tomorrow, they're just going to hang themselves. There are two really cool quotes from this one. The first one is, we are all born mad, some remain so. And then the second is, they give birth astride a grave. Light gleams in an instant, then it is night once more. They're both cool because they talk about birth and most of the play is focused on death. So it's a very cyclical image. Hope this helped.